Hello, everybody. I hope you're all well. My name is Paula Toppila, and I'm the executive director and curator of IHME Helsinki. And my pronoun is she, her. Welcome to join to the last part of the art science ecology course that uh, is a IHME Helsinki initiative and realized in collaboration with Fine Arts Academy of University of Arts and Helsinki Institute of Sustainability Science of University of Helsinki. IHME Helsinki is a contemporary art commissioning agency that commissions one temporary public artwork annually. And the discursive program along the themes of our mission takes different forms every year. This year, a specific discourse is being created with this lecture. This course that consists out of open for all lectures and workshops aimed at students from the two universities. Today, the workshop that I will be running will follow right after the lecture. Those students taking part from the lecture tray, Luento Tarjotin, please write lecture tray and your name in the chat for your teacher to see that you are attending. Some household issues briefly. Microphones and video connection. Please keep your microphone and video closed during the entire event. Thank you. It's also ecologically more sustainable. And um, questions. There will be 10 to 15 minutes after the lecture for your questions. So we would like to ask you to write your questions in the chat whenever you are ready, and I will try to answer as many of them. Safe space. We follow safe space guidelines in all our events. The lecture is free from discrimination, such as racism, sexism, and ableism. Please make everyone feel safe to participate and do not make assumptions about each other based on gender, health, abilities, and other stereotypes. You can always give feedback and tell us about discriminatory or other interference to IHME Helsinki staff member by email or by feedback form or here in the chat. Uh, feedback, there will be, we shall do one uh, quick poll here in the beginning of the lecture in order to know a little bit about you, our audience, and in order to develop our practices. And you will be given two questions here. Uh, where are you joining the lecture from? And how did you find out about the Art Science Ecology course? Thank you for quick replies. And we shall soon review the results. There will also be a link to a more profound feedback form in the chat. And we are very happy if you take the time to reply to that too. And there are also possibility to win. We shall uh, draw some uh, winners in the end of the course, probably sometime next week. And, and you can win a t-shirt designed by Jana Winderen uh, that is produced in connections to her project that we plan to realize in August. So today, 84% are joining from the Finnish capital region, Helsinki, Espoo, Kauniainen and Vantaa, but also some people, 11% outside of Helsinki, the capital region, and 5% from abroad. And you have learned about this course from the University of Fine Arts uh, channels and also Facebook. Those are the best forums to find out about this course. Thank you so much for replying and very welcome everyone. Um, I have a great pleasure to be the last speaker of this course and talk about ecolo ecological transition of IHME. Firstly, a brief introduction to myself. I have been working as the executive, executive director and curator of IHME since 2007. And I have uh, my background in art history that I studied in the University of Turku, Finland. And I have also studied curating in the Netherlands and leadership and management here in Helsinki. 
I've always worked with contemporary art in international contexts, focusing on curating and producing contemporary art exhibitions and projects. Having worked at IHME for so long, my professional interests are also in art in public realm, art and social change, contemporary art commissioning, and for the last few years, I have been particularly interested in the ecological transition in the arts and put it, putting it in practice in the context of IHME in particular. And I will share my screen and start the lecture right away. So I believe you can see my screen now. My, my talk today is the last one of this online course that IHME has planned and produced in collaboration with the two universities. The course has presented to you five artists and researchers and their approaches to the connections between art science and ecology. Their practices from artistic research to actual artworks explore our relationship with different aspects of our environment, showing us that everything we need for a good life is dependent on natural environment. And that is uh, natural resources, other species, flora and fauna, clean water, clean air, healthy soil and healthy ecosystems. I tend to talk about ecological sustainability being fully aware that we, when we talk about sustainability, it consists out of at least three sustainabilities, ecological, economical, and social sustainability. But I think that the thing is that um, we cannot reach economical nor social sustainability without ecological sustainability. And I think that the work to be done now is to reconnect with nature understand the interdependence between our well-being and the well-being of environment and other species. The concepts of well-being and progress, for example, need to be rethought and recalibrated to the current situation where we are approaching the 1.5 degrees global warming. So my talk will be about the ecological transition of IHME and the role of curating in this process. I will speak to, firstly, I will give you a brief introduction, background to IHME from curatorial and ecological perspective. And secondly, I will speak about the ecological transition um, as an institutional change and then uh, about ecological transition from the curatorial perspective a little bit more substantially, including also some methods that we use. And lastly, I will share some references for inspiration in the spirit of continuous learning. Um, I will not talk so much about the artworks that we are preparing with Jana Winderen and Katie Patterson, as they have already held their own lectures. And I think that perhaps it's more rewarding to talk about these works when they have actually happened in August, September this year, as we hope. And uh, instead, I will speak from the perspective of an art institution and curating, and especially on how to do things differently as a response to environmental crisis. I would also like to emphasize that most of the time I'm talking about the very particular context of IHME. And what I hope is that this model will encourage you to take your own path towards ecologically sustainable practice. I think that every institution has to tailor make its own route according to the size, resources and state of will in the institution. And as we know, uh, the role of the curator is very context specific, meaning that curators in different kinds of institutions have different kinds of responsibilities. In this picture, I'm trying to show my role in IHME Helsinki, that is a very small organization. We are two people working in full time and third person is working part time. My responsibilities are curating and producing the annual commission, taking care of the staff, 
financial administration and media relations. I'm also the chair of advisory board that selects the artist with me and uh, develops our programs. And I'm also the secretary of the board and report to them about the operations of Ihme Helsinki. And then I will give you a brief uh, look at the history of the uh, ProArte Foundation that is running IGMA Helsinki. Uh, found, foundation is founded in 2007 and the objectives of the foundation are to support new critical forms of art, make contemporary art more accessible, reach out to new audiences and strengthen international dialogue in the, in the field of art. So these are the reasons why IHME and ProArte Foundation exists. And what did we do for the first 10 years from 2009 and 2018? We produced IHME Contemporary Art Festival. And uh, the core of the festival was the annual commission in the public realm and three-day festival around the topics of this particular art commission. We also produced a quite substantial art educational program in collaboration with Aalto University and the Youth Services of City of Helsinki. And what about the IHME project, as we called the annual commissions then? Um, the invitation to the artist was to think about these features along with the defined time schedule and the given budget. So participation, we would ask them, could there be a dimension for audience participation? Could the work offer collective experience? How to secure this in the work? Equality, equity and accessibility. And uh, it was given that the work would have a temporary presence in the public realm. So this was something to consider. And also could the work trigger a change in thinking and doing. So some kind of transformative aspect in the, in the process. And the subject of change was to be defined during the process. And here you can see the artists that we worked with in the festival context, Anthony Gormley, Susan Phillips, Superflex, Christian Boltanski, Miroslav Balka, Jael Bartana, Jeremy Deller, Katarina Sheda, Theaster Gates and Henry Corkinson. And even then, uh, our work when we were making the festival, our work was often characterized with the famous quote from architect Mies van der Rohe, less is more. So in our case, commissioning just one, however, often large scale work every year certainly made a very curious concept for a festival that also from the curatorial perspective would focus on those particular themes that the commissioned artwork would convey. So the concept was indeed very focused. Uh, so some sustainable, sustainable potential inherent in the concept since 2009 could be listed as follows. So making only one work uh, and one annual festival and producing almost everything locally. So using local experts, local staff members and recycling of material. This was pretty much the idea how we then in the beginning thought about ecology uh, in, in our work, it was about recycling material, which was something to begin with, but of course today we think about it in a more profound way in our current um, direction. But uh, main resource, local human resources uh, in several commissions. And one example, how did uh, this happen? Uh, very briefly, in this work, the public on their everyday rounds was momentarily faced with their shared past when museum objects from several cultural historical museums in Helsinki made their way into the hands of city residents in seven public spaces. So Jeremy Deller's Do Touch uh, staff members gave passers by further information on the objects and the time period they were used all materials of this piece were local. 
So objects from the local museum collections, staff members were local and they even used public transportation to travel to different locations every day. Only those red banners, ba banners or banderoles that you see that says Tapa Museoidemme Tähdet or meet the stars of our museums to touch um, were handmade in the UK. So that was something that was sent in small package to Finland, but that was all. And when it comes to the usage of energy, we used the, ven the energy that was already there in each public venue. However, it is important to point out that not all projects that seem to be immaterial, meaning that when there is no materials or hardly any materials produced as part of the project would cause less emissions. So the materiality of the work and the amount of emissions they cause are not necessarily in synchronization. For example, Katerina Sheda's project, Rambasker's tour in 2016, consisted out of 300 hours of musical performances in all 10 tram lines of Helsinki during four days. But the musicians were not only from Helsinki, but majority came by flying from abroad, which meant that the emissions were much bigger. This is also why I recommend not to make too many generalizations, but instead look at each artwork individually. And we should look at the following aspects in the process of making it happen if we think about the environmental uh, emissions. The use of energy, the need of transportation and travels, what needs to be purchased or rented, what kind of food is being served by the organizer and how much waste is resulting in the process of making. And finally, whose emissions are we talking about? Usually the one paying is in charge of the emissions too. And then another uh, commission that we produced, Henry Corkinson's The Beetle, had a very influential protagonist because this small beetle, Hylocaris cruentatus, that is an endangered species and can be found only in, in a suburban park in Vanta, Finland. Um, the story of the beetle and the human acts that are threatening its existence were connected to the biggest challenges of our time, the environmental crisis and biodiversity loss. And we realized that climate crisis is a chronic crisis and that it is also the crisis of the art world. It is not enough that we present artworks that raise awareness on these issues, but we must start studying what it means to be ecologically sustainable as an art institution. And working with Henrik and on this last festival that we did was a wake up call for us in this perspective. And since then, when preparing that uh, edition of the festival, we took on already uh, some practices and this slide is listing what kind of practices we took on then uh, to do with uh, traveling, art production, marketing and communications, food and the need to share the practices with others. So perhaps something to learn if you're interested to, to consider compensation after doing the carbon footprint calculation and changes accordingly, uh, we would recommend to, to choose certified uh, gold standard verified emission reduction projects like Ilmasto Apu that we have used so far here in Finland. And uh, then in 2017, we had decided that the festival in 2018 with Henry Hawkinson's piece, The Beetle, would be the last one and that after that we would do something different. And that something different got its shape during the year 2018, 2019, and we made the decision to bring ecological sustainability as part of everything that we do. And during that time, we also published this book that kind of put put the past in one package. So IGNA 2009, 2018, Art in Public times 10, including documentation of all the 10 public commissions we had produced so far. 
And then start, we started uh, when putting the past uh, inside a book, we also uh, started uh, the change in our organization. Uh, <clears throat> and here you can see the two questions that I have been repeating when every time when I've been introducing each part of this course. But this is really what we are exploring right now. And when we go on, we shall formulate, of course, other questions and challenges as this is a continuous learning process. So how are we to exist as a high quality contemporary art commissioning agency and how are we to collaborate internationally and create relevant, relevant discourse in the art context in the age of environmental crisis? And what does it mean to become carbon neutral or negative contemporary art institution? This is something we learned a lot about last year, 2020, when, which was the first year when we have actually reached carbon uh, neutrality. And um, ecological transition of IHME meant that we updated our strategy, values, mission and vision. And I would like to highlight here one of our values, the freedom of art within a framework of life sustaining systems. And sometimes I have been asked that are we not limiting the freedom of artists when we present the artistic freedom should happen within the framework of life sustaining systems. And as always, uh, also in our case, it is a matter of negotiation and finally a matter of mutual agreement on what is the framework for the collaboration. But to put this question in correct proportions, I would also like to ask that has humankind ever before been confronted by such a serious and fundamental global crisis in its history as now with environmental crisis and related other crises? We are living very exceptional times. And as we know, we are already using the resources of future generations. So we should understand our responsibilities and try to learn and think long term. This is also why I would like to ask, can we afford not to use art as tool that will, along with many other means and tools and methods, take us towards more sustainable future? And I would also like to share our vision and point out this red, highlighted with red color, that IGMA will through art initiate social dialogue and support citizens' ability to adapt to environmental crisis. And um, communication is in a very important role as we see that it is important to bring hope to our audiences and really try to support citizens' ability to adapt to the environmental crisis, which means that we would like to offer some kind of advice to see what we can do ourselves in our everyday lives to improve uh, the, or, or to, to, uh, to make the change happen. And um, along with renewing our strategy, vision and values, we needed new kind of expertise, both in our board and in our advisory board. Here you can see the current members of the advisory board. And with this uh, group of people, we select the artists to do the annual commissions and we develop our programs. And as you can see, the scientific context and ecological sustainability are very well represented in this group. Here is a group portrait of us. And uh, what kind of changes took place on an operational level? So we took on the new name, Contemporary Art Commissioning Agency in Helsinki, even more emphasis is thus uh, put in the collaboration with the artists and making one commission per year. Uh, the dialogue between art and science and research in focus when we select the artist, but also in connection to the production itself. And annual festival remains in the past. Instead, we do in collaboration with art and science institutions um, annually four to five events and ecological sustainability in everything we do. 
And we realized that we needed expertise also in our stuff. And I hired Sara Korpela here as our eco coordinator to calculate our carbon footprint and also to share everything we had learned for, with others through her eco blog. And we proceeded this way in order to see where are the biggest emissions caused and what can we do about them. So carbon footprint calculation makes it visible where the emissions are being born. And it's also a useful tool uh, in order to see uh, how much you still need to compensate the emissions that are left after the changes you have made. And as we know, the world is not ready and there aren't carbon free solutions for everything yet. And um, in the next few slides, I will re reflect for a moment um, different concepts around curating that I will find re relevant also when we talk about ecological curating, namely the concepts of uh, curating the curatorial and paracuratorial. So what is curating? The root of the word is from Latin, curare, to take care, which I think is still in the very core of the definition. And here is one quote from a professor, curator and a friend, Mary Jane Jacob from Art Institute of Chicago. And um, I have learned a lot from her over the decades we have known each other. And I think that this, this quote crystallizes something of the variety of aspects of curating. So sometimes the curatorial role is assertive, taking control or challenging other protagonists, including artists and audiences to take action. Sometimes it's more facilitating or to use Persik's metaphor, it is good maintenance. But usually it is a mix of all this. Curating done well with care is important to the functioning of art. And then the concept of the curatorial. I have here three different approaches to that that I subscribe to myself. First one is defined by Swedish curator Maria Lind. She has curated many international exhibitions and taught curating at the Bard College, and she was the director of Tens de Constal for many years. And for her, curatorial is methodological approach, where art is in relationship with chosen context, time, and questions. It is political agency that try to go beyond which is already known. And for Irit Rogov, who is a curator, theorist, and teacher, professor of visual cultures, uh, heading the PhD in curatorial knowledge program in Goldsmiths College in London. And for her, the curatorial is critical thought that raises questions that unravel over time. And Beatrice von Bismarck, that is a German curator and professor of uh, art history in Leipzig. Um, Curatorial is constant state of negotiation, contributing to other processes of becoming. And I think that um, in particular, the methodological approach that Maria Lind proposes is definitely a very valid starting point also in the field of arts, thinking about the transition needed in the times of environmental crisis. And in the end of my talk, I'll be presenting a list of some of the methods we are using at ISME. And I would like to thank Paul O'Neill for his writing and lectures that I have been um, finally found these articulations quoted here. And the paracuratorial is the third term to do with curating and it means the curated program along uh, and above the curatorial. So discussions, screenings, publications, outreach programs and printed material. Uh, you will see uh, that the paracurator plays a particularly important role when we talk about IHMES program in current situation, as one of our aims is to raise awareness and create hope among our peers, collaborating artists and other collaborators and audiences to take action towards more sustainable art world and the world. And um, 
this is um, my description about my curatorial position at IHME, always in the beginning when we start the process with, with artists. So the curatorial potential in open invitations like IHMES and the dialogue that follows lies in the following qualities that the curator needs to take over. So the process of continuous learning, flexibility and openness to take any direction during the process of defining what the project will be like in the end and tolerance for continuous uncertainty, challenge and change. The curatorial potential unfolds when you are not afraid to be in front of the unknown and when you are open to look for unexpected directions and for new collaborators according to the needs of the project. And I had a great pleasure to have a conversation with Patricia Constantin, who is a lecturer in curating at Aalto University School of Art, Design and Architecture. And, and she made me see the connection of this approach to Eduard Glissant's archipelagic thinking. So Eduard Glissant was a Martinican author, poet and theorist, and he calls European world consciousness a continental because it's functions through self-reference and demarcation. In contrast, he formulates what he calls an archipelagic thinking. This is the thinking of the manifold and permanent reference, which does not systematically delimit, divide and differentiate cultural differences, but rather to see it as a constant exchange and mixing process. Everything is related to everything and must always be thought of in this diversity. As archipelagic culture thus tries to cope with unpredictability, incompatibility and non-simultaneity without intentionally directing the world according to a model and physically shaping it. But since the multiplicity of the phenomena can no longer be systematized, for example, under the criterion of modernity, we live in fragmented worlds in a time of permanent shocks and conflicts. So Glissant advises that an awareness of the possibility and openness for the unpredictable should be developed. And the new universal consciousness is thus expressed in a complex narrative of relations. So it's a inspiration, one of these inspirations that I will also be sharing in the end, the books written by Glissant. Um, So here is Jana Winderen, who is going to make the first IHME Helsinki Commission this year, hopefully in August. And Jana is here in her favorite activity, listening, listening and recording underwater animal sounds that she then composes into sound worlds in installations, concerts, radio programs and CDs. So the plan for realizing Jana's work more sustainably was ready already last spring in May, and we hope COVID will allow us to realize it this year. So it's important to understand that um, uh, ecological thinking has to be there since the very beginning of the collaboration with the artist that will create the commission. And this is how you can foresee the emissions and look for other solutions that will cause less emissions. I think um, this is the new expertise uh, we all need to obtain also as citizens. Some kind of carbon consciousness, understanding of the use of natural resources in our life and work. And I think that as curators, especially because curators role is crucial as the central mediator in art production, uh, on not only selecting topics and discourse, but also on how to do things. And here is the rowing stadium and uh, rowing stadium will be the venue for the sound installation that Jana will realize this year in August. And um, as a venue, it is carbon neutral, but this is not the reason why it was selected. Um, Ihme Helsinki exists to make art happen. So this venue simply fitted so well with Jana's thinking around the forthcoming commission. As here, when you sit on the seats, you look at the Baltic Sea and she wants to bring the underwater animal sounds, also recordings from the Baltic Sea, audible to the audience there. 
as uh, her composition. It will be tailor-made for this architectural uh, site. But to come back to the ecological side of the realization, we shall need some electricity here for the sound system. And it seems, unfortunately, that we don't have the option to buy renewable electricity, but it will have to be, be uh, electricity that is a mix of renewable and fossil fuels, because this is what the city of Helsinki is able to provide. Um, here, is carbon footprint of Jana Winderen's commission. Jana's work is the first artwork, the carbon footprint calculation of which we have done. And here you can see on the left, the column diagram for high emission solution for Jana's project as a whole, that is if we continued business as usual. And the other column on the left and right, on the right is uh, for low emission solution and the parameters um, are indicated in Finnish, unfortunately, are in English. Exhibition construction is blue and heating is uh, orange. Electricity is gray and um, printed matter is, uh, is yellow. And food is um, lighter blue and seminar is green and as you see it, it, it causes the biggest emissions and here you see um, this written out in in uh, in the carbon footprint calculation in numbers and uh, i'm not going to go into detail uh, except that uh, you see that the total amount in the business as usual solutions meaning that, for example, we would arrange a physical seminar in Helsinki and invite people from abroad uh, to come and speak here. Um, it would cost 11,000 kilos uh, of carbon footprint, while when we, with very small changes, could diminish it to 1,973 kilos. Uh, the biggest change being that instead of the seminar, we would arrange um, um, interviews that are printed uh, as texts on our website. And um, so here you can see some of the paracuratorial programs to do with Jana Winderen's work. So this is uh, these uh, interviews that we have made and we shall make two spring with Jana. So um, you can see that there's a variety of expertise that we have uh, interviewed. There is a fisherman, there are several natural scientists, uh, limnologists and also farmer. So you can learn about many things to do with the Baltic Sea, but also with other water systems that Jana has been involved with through her artistic work. So that you're very welcome to visit our website to see what it is and it's a very essential part of Jana's work as well this seminar and uh, seminar as interviews and also this uh, listening through the dead songs kickoff event that we organized in august because of covid we were not able to realize the, um, the actual installation last year but we wanted to invite people to visit the, the rowing stadium which is normally not open for the audience and uh, also invite Finnish uh, researchers to do with the um, condition, current condition of Baltic Sea and to, to, to discuss that what can we do about it in our everyday lives. And also we had uh, one person talking about the citizen observations in Baltic Sea research and, and how can we be involved in, in research as well as citizens. So um, and then a few words about our collaboration with Katie Patterson, who is a Scottish artist, and, and uh, with her we are making the Ime Helsing Commission 2021. And her, um, 
her work consists out of these two incense sticks. If you look very closely, you can see a text written on them. In the first one on the left, it says first forest, and the one on the right, it says last forest. So um, the left-hand one has the scent of the first forest that existed 380 million years ago. And the right-hand one has the scent of the last forest of the age of the climate crisis, which has been defined to be the scent of the Amazon rainforest. So with Katie, we went through several proposals for this uh, forthcoming work in the beginning. And along the process, the current ethos of IHNA was totally submerged in the selected project. Uh, materially, the artwork consists out of two incense sticks made of organic materials that will be burned in collective rituals in different public locations in Helsinki. And thus, the project is very conscious about its environmental impact being materially utterly minimal and leaving only a small pile of ash to recycle behind. Also, the project collaborators, like the incense maker, have been carefully selected to be the ones that share Ichnes values and are willing to learn more about carbon-free uh, future and present as well as part of this uh, collaboration. And all research um, in Finland, Scotland, UK, Japan, United States and Brazil has been conducted with remote connections, uh, including basically only artist travels to Finland. And thanks to COVID as well, it, this has been the situation. But all these procedures and practices we've been planning already before the COVID. And then um, kind of summary about the ecological transition in, in curatorial process at IHME. And it all delves around the question on how to do things. So first of all, the invitation to the artist is to explore the unknown together. That's the beginning. And then the planning process starts in the spirits of Ignes ethos, which means holistic ecological sustainability. And one of the methods that we use is carbon footprint calculation that is integrated in the process. And also collective learning process is is important aspect also to do with our collaborators and audiences. And as said, remote connections, new and existing networks to substitute travels in research and production. And trying to keep the transport needs as as minimal as possible and remembering recycling vegetarian food and renewable energy options in the conversations whenever these are addressed. And um, towards ecological um, sustainability in an art institution, so taking a little bit bigger picture, not only the artistic uh, production. So some of the methods, tools and meals that we have find really useful, it really helps if the ecological sustainability is included in the strategy. It goes through your values, vision and also expertise uh, in the organization and also art is a very powerful tool as, as we know, contents, approach, attitude and meaning creation in the artwork. Uh, art is a space where we can imagine something that doesn't yet exist and it's a place to test ideas, to feel different kinds of feelings and obtain new kind of knowledge. So it's very important uh, part as well. And as said, curating curatorial, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a position where you can be leading change and meaning creation and rethinking the how and mediation to collaborators and audiences. And again, carbon footprint calculation and also communication, it creates a really uh, powerful impact uh, when we share and learn good practices and, and create hope. And also we have started environmental certification process. I think these can also be found in, in, uh, in many different countries as well, not only here in Finland. But uh, we, even if our, our practices are already pretty sustainable, we wanted to take on this 
certification process to show our audiences that that we um, support the idea of uh, certifications because it's an overall process that goes through the whole institution and and uh, it shows our audiences as well that when we are certified we have been through this process and hopefully this all results to the very welcome change in culture both personal organization and societal towards a more sustainable future and another um, quote that solutions towards ecological sustainability need to be tailor-made for each project along the process of planning. It's a process of negotiation, balancing between the ambitions of the artist and the ecologically sustainable solutions that can or cannot be found. And as said, Ihne exists to make art happen and we know that art alone is also a transformative power. And then I will like to share some references and sources of inspiration for you um, that I have found really useful for my own thinking and also our collective thinking at IHME. So first there are two books that have to do with um, biodiversity, The Sixth Extinction and Unnatural History by Elizabeth Colbert um who is a journalist and writer writes in new yorker for example she tells us why and how human beings have altered life on the planet in a way no species have before so she's interviewing research in half a dozen disciplines descriptions of the fascinating species that have already been lost and the history of extinction as a concept colbert provides um comprehensive account of the disappearance occurring before our very eyes. She shows that the sixth extinction is likely to be mankind's most lasting legacy, compelling us to rethink the fundamental question of what it means to be human. And Juha Kaupinen's um, biodiversity a book in Finnish has a very similar structure, but it's, it's, it, it deals with uh, species that are have vanished or are vanishing in Finnish context. So biodiversity loss is, um, if you want to know more, I strongly recommend these books. And then there is the Sivistys Vaurautena, Maria Joutsenvirta, Arto Salonen. This uh, book is in Finnish, but it translates uh, Bildung as wealth, radically but gently towards sustainable society. And um, um, I, there are many, many uh, aspects why I find this book inspirational, but, but a particular concept that they present is uh, to think about uh, future uh, human beings in the future should call themselves planetarians, like not European planetarian. And in planetary civilization, the circle of human care expands from our own immediate circle to cover all those people whose lives and directly are directly or indirectly related to our lives through our consumption habits. Planetary civilization is not limited to humans. It also encompasses the non-human reality of animals, plants, the atmosphere, the soil and the ecosystems formed by these on which life on earth is completely dependent. Lifeless nature is limited and therefore the pursuit of a good life for a civilized person emphasizes those things whose proliferation does not have the limitations inherent in the closed system of the earth. And the second book here is probably very familiar to you, Felix Quattari's The Three Ecologists. So the French social theorist and political activist Felix Quattari argued that there could not and would not be a sustainable and effective environmental movement if there were not parallel radical global transformations on mental and social registers as well. So echoing and extending upon anthropologist George Gregory Bateson, Quattari uh, would refer to a tripled ecosophy the three ecologies, mental ecology, social ecology, 
and environmental ecology. And one more um, pair, a couple of books. There's another Finnish um, book in Finnish, which is by Kukka Ranta and Jaana Kanninen, Vastatuuleen Saamen kansan pakkosuomalaistamisesta. Its a book is translates against the wind and it delves into the history of the Sami experience and opens up the Sami mental landscape told by the Sami themselves. So forced assimilation has left the Sami with deep traumas that have been passed down for generations and important themes are also the loss of countries and the Sami experience of denying their own worldview, social system and language. And I'm particularly impressed to learn how Sami people through their nomadic lifestyle with the reindeers is rooted not only in the land and landscape and the well-being of them through regenerative practices and cyclic concept of time, but also with their connection to their already past ancestors through their language and naming of places, for example. And another book to do with time, the concept of time and thinking um, in different um, ways, this time in long term, as Roman Krasnaric uh, is proposing in The Good Ancestor, how to think long term in a short term world. So this book uh, is about hope and the power of imagination. Humankind has always had the innate ability to plan for posterity and take action that will resonate for decades, centuries, even millennia to come. So if we want to become good ancestors, now is the time to recover and enrich that imaginative skill. And he draws on radical solutions from around the world and, and celebrates innovators who are reinventing democracy, culture and economics so that we all have the chance to become good ancestors and create a better tomorrow. And last book is, uh, is um, Edward Lissant's, this is one of his books, Caribbean Discourse, that I happen to have here at home. So that's why you have the picture here. But uh, I, I already I explained his connection to to this, um, to my thinking. And uh, the last book is Andres Nermangnason's On Time and Water. And um, he reflects uh, in this book on the signs of climate crisis and the melting glaciers in Iceland. And through this landscape and the story of his own, own uh, relatives, grandparents and children, and the chain of different dead generations, his message being that um, we must engage with the future with more intimate and urgent way. So I'm almost there. Uh, I would like to finish with um, uh, sharing with you the news that um, even if this art science ecology course will finish today, uh, we are producing a podcast with my advisory board members, Uta Metabauer, Antti Majava, Hanna Johansson and Jussi Parikka. And these conversations uh, articulated here will be coming out in April, June, so quite soon. And uh, I would also like to express my, my gratitude for trust and support to our, our funding uh, collaborators, Kone Foundation and Savastamolen Foundation. And here are the links for further information to do with the things that I've been discussing uh, here. So on our website and on our YouTube channel, you can find uh, all these materials and documentations also of this seminar. Uh, contributions. Thank you very much. I will stop sharing. All right, but um, I would like to thank you for your attention today. I'm very happy that, um, that you were able to participate. And uh, also this uh, talk will be shared as a recording on our YouTube channel later on uh, this week. And as this is... Uh, 
the last lecture of this course. I would like to thank all the contributors of the course, Antti Majava, Katie Patterson, Sakari Salonen, Jan Salasiewicz, Jana Winderen, Susan Shukli and Samir Polnik for your insights and running the workshops. Thank you also the students of this course, our collaborating universities, our audiences both here home in Finland and abroad. And thank you also to my colleague Päivi Matala for your assistance in realization of this course and taking care of the recordings and communications and Sara Korpela for all these calculations that I have presented here in this lecture. And um, let us all stay safe and healthy and keep up hope. Um, I would like to finish with a short quote, very famous quote from African-American activist, writer and professor Angela Davis. You have to act as if it were possible to radically change the world and you have to do it every day. Thank you. And for the students, please uh, take the other link to the workshop and we will see you there in five minutes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.